a big week this week. Um, we've been waiting for this policy for a long time. Shamabel, you have been looking um, a little bit at the distribution across um, households of these tax cuts. What have you found? Well, I'm going to ask for your question, Rebecca. It's, um the incomes are much lower in the provinces, so the benefits will be much less in the provinces than they'll be in the cities. And you know, if you look at the middle of the middle in New Zealand, you know, a young couple living in the Manawatu, for example, they're only going to get a very few dollars per week. So you know, it, it is going to be very much a case of the numbers look very big on the aggregate. Tax cuts are really expensive, but what it means for people's back pockets is at the margin quite small, unless you're a high income earner. Uh, Fran, what have you thought of this, the tax cut element? When you saw it unveiled, what did you think? Were you surprised? No, I wasn't surprised, but I guess one of the things, if you're making a case for the squeezed middle, I wouldn't have given tax breaks to the base of national. In other words, you know, um, moving on interest uh, deductibility for property, uh, also a bright line test, a range of things, which actually that money could have been poured into more tax cuts for the middle. Were they the big winners of all of this, uh, the property investors, shall we be on? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that is where a huge change is going to take place. You know, the return of the interest uh, deductibility um, is going to be a really big deal for property investors. So it, it was very much designed towards their base, like Fran says. I mean, you know, it is politics, but it, it feels quite cynical relative to the headlines. And, and also, if you're talking about $14.6 billion, and then the actual impact on households is quite small... Is the benefit worth the risk, Fran? We're in uncertain economic times. Yeah, and that's very interesting. I mean, one of the things I found quite fascinating was the decision to take the cap off buying um, homes, you know, more than $2 million for an offshore buyer, and a rather heroic assumption that slapping 15% on that would raise the thick end of uh, three-quarters of a billion dollars. Um, that assumes people are going to um, arrive here and buy at this time, and it assumes relative wealth. But there's also an issue which concerns me is what does this mean to the overall um, price of houses? That will add more competition in, into the market. Mm. Those people who flick off houses, assuming will buy something else. So it, adds, it gets the market going again, but it gets it going again at a time when the squeeze middle is finding it hard, in some cases, to service mortgages or buy a house in the first place. So... Um, I find that, um, you know, one of the things we noticed over the last little while was the wealth effect. You know, people felt good if the value of their houses went up. Everyone is now facing, if you've got a mortgage, increased costs. Your equity has been depressed. Add more competition into the market, both by doing that, but also by allowing uh, more immigration. Mm. Suddenly you can see an elevation of property prices over time. And that will be great for the base, but it will still impact that squeeze middle. The squeezed middle misses out. Shamabil, the, these numbers have started to unravel around this foreign yeah. buyer's tax, haven't they? Oh, I mean, those numbers are just bullshit, to be quite honest. Um, <laughs> the potential tax revenue from all the over $2 million properties would be a billion dollars based mm. on the last 12 months. So they're assuming that more than 70% of all $2 million plus properties are going to be sold to foreigners. It just doesn't make sense. So, you know, the tax cuts, from a political element, I get it, that mm. you're trying to appeal to your base. But the fiscal neutrality part, which was kind of a centrepiece of their policy as well, that doesn't look as well thought out. So whoever's done the numbers and who's done the quality assurance really does need to have a really good look at this stuff because I don't believe they've got it right. Well, we've also found out that there may be wrinkles in even being able to implement this with big markets of buyers mm. like China, like mm. Australia, for example, Fran. Yeah. That's problematic, isn't it, for the policy? Well, it is, because we have tax agreements, which um, in some cases make this quite difficult. I mean, I think there's an issue with the tax agreements in the first place, and, and a heck of a lot of countries do not allow. I mean, they put their, you know, private market first, and they're very careful to make sure that foreigners don't actually bid up the prices. But when you look at Asia, last time we had the major price escalation, um, houses in New Zealand were being uh, marketed aggressively, and they were being marketed at no stamp duty, which effectively this 15% um, mm. uh, tax is, no capital gains tax, very little regulation. Um, you could turn, on, turn over your houses in a short period of time. Mm. So we have had, you know, that giant sucking sound of people coming in 
been marketed into this economy with a tax system that is so beneficial to property and not elsewhere. But can I just add one thing? You know, what's really interesting to me is National introduced the Bright Line test. Mm. Now they want to introduce a stamp duty. Yeah. And you know what, how it's going to play out over the course of the coming decades, right? Mm. This is going to become permanent and for everybody. Mm. So it's really interesting to see a, a, a party that is... Mm -hmm against too many taxes <laughs> is the one that has introduced so many of Good these point. new things. Well, because, and this is what I thought too this week, I thought this is supposed to be the party of low taxes, but we have now new and revolving taxes and the sort of money go round mm. to provide tax cuts. They're also going to uh, raid the ETS and public service cuts. Yeah, right? yeah. on the ETS, I mean, that really does concern me. And this is, um, we really do have, need to have absolute unan unanimity across Parliament on that. New Zealand is going to be facing a large offshore quasi tax bill because of Kyoto, mm. because we haven't actually reduced our ETS emissions to the track that we actually thought we might. And so, you know, if you've got um, a fund that was supposed to be used to accelerate. Um, you know, major investment to get emissions down, major transformational pl um, moves that take money to actually raid that and then say, oh, it's corporate welfare to use that fund to accelerate stuff. I don't buy that whatsoever. I totally agree. I